All right, guys, let me explain the story of Nashville hot chicken and how it came to be. So this is a story I was told when I moved to Nashville. I don't know if it's true or not. Just take it as folktale or something. I don't know. So one day, there was a wife making chicken for her husband. And he was real demanding and real kind of a, kind of a snot rag. He wasn't a nice guy. And she was just fed up with him and tired of him. And she thought, you know what? I'm going to make this chicken so hot, it's going to burn his guts out. Okay? So she serves him some chicken. She spiced it up really hot. And the thing that happened is he loved it. He absolutely loved it that way. And it turned out to be a good thing, right? So much so that he began selling chicken that way. Uh, and they began, they opened a place and sold hot chicken. And that's where um, Prince's hot chicken is like the originator, from what I heard, of hot chicken. Even though it's not my favorite because it's way too hot. Their mild makes me cry. Literally. So um, so I've been to Prince's. Uh, the, the best one in Nashville right now is Hattie B's. So we're going to start doing the Nashville Hot Chicken Wars on Jack and the Ghost Show. Uh, everything's going to be compared to Hattie B's chicken because I think Hattie B's is the best in town from Hendersonville all the way to Nashville. Okay? But there's so many hot chicken places. Um, that's... that's uh, the tradition is that it's served over white bread, not toasted, plain white bread and sliced pickles. And that's it. And it's got the hot sauce on it. You can get uh, mo you can get regular, mild, hot, very hot, death hot, crawl and die hot. I mean, they got crazy names for it. It's really big out here that they have a, a hot chicken convention. I think it's on 4th of July. I think. I've never been. Because I do something on 4th of July that's totally different. But anyway, Nashville Hot Chicken is way popular out here. KFC made it, and they were just okay. But if you ever come to Nashville, go to Hattie B's, all right? They got the best. But I thought, man, I'd love to. Every time I call Hattie B's, it's like it's like a, an hour away, and then you get there, and it's never ready, and you got tons of people passing you, getting their chicken, and it's it's an ordeal. It's like it's a, it's a big treat. So um, so call ahead. For your hot chicken if you ever get it. But anyway, I don't want to have to do all that for hot chicken. What if I can just make a quick, lazy version? So I started thinking, well, here's the hot chicken spicing over here, right? And here's the fried chicken over here. So if I can just brush that onto that and make that hot chicken, right? That's what I'm thinking. So this is what we're doing. So I'm going to make what I, I've looked it up. And this is a, a recipe for a hot chicken seasoning that you can, that you brush on. Now, the recipe I looked at wanted you to make the chicken and batter it and cook it and fry it. And no, no, no. We're gonna go to the supermarket. They're gonna drop our chicken fresh, and then we're picking, we're grabbing it hot. We're bringing it home, and it'll be nice and warm. So we're gonna apply the spiciness to it when it gets here. We're gonna pop it in the oven and get that spiciness just kind of set in on the chicken, and then we're going to eat it. Whew. That's a long story. But anyway, that's how I came up with this video. You guys ready? Okay, if you want to know how Hattie B's makes their hot chicken, I have another video, hot chicken video. Look it up on my channel. Uh, that's the Hattie B's recipe. It has, if the recipe has lard in it, then it's the Hattie B's recipe. That's the best version. But this is the quickest version. I don't know if there's any good. So I'll let you know at the end of this video if this was a success and you should try this or if this is a failure and throw this video out. All right. So here's the ingredients. This is for the spicy mix that we're going to brush onto our fried chicken. You ready? Got some brown sugar. I got some olive oil. Got some paprika, garlic powder. I got uh, cayenne pepper. That's the key right there. Cayenne pepper. I got salt and pepper. And that's about it. So let's put this all together. And then Tammy's going to be here in a little bit and be bringing us the chicken. And then we'll brush it right on and see how it goes. Okay, guys, I reviewed the recipe. It asked for frying oil, not olive oil. So I put the olive, even though you can fry with olive oil, I went with another frying oil and I replaced my olive oil with the frying oil. Okay. So you can, you can use olive oil if you want, but here's the oil. So let's put it all in a bowl. Get it all together. 
Let's put the oil in first. As you can see, I've got different spices in here. Salt, pepper, garlic, and paprika. Such small amounts, I like to put them all in one bowl as I measure them out. All right, I'm gonna put that in here. And shake it all around because you're gonna to have to mix this up. You wanna make sure that there's not a lot of garlic just in one spot or a lot of pepper or whatever. Okay, there's that. Okay, there's the brown sugar. Put that in there. And there is your cayenne pepper. That's a lot of cayenne pepper. Um, I'm probably, it asks for three tablespoons. This is where you control the heat. If you like it light, go one tablespoon. If you like a medium, go two tablespoons. I went about two and a half. Probably gonna burn my guts out on the show, but there's a lot of cayenne pepper there. Hopefully the sugar will balance it out. Get it all mixed up. Take your time on this step here, okay? This is gonna make all the difference between good flavor or burning your guts out. You wanna make sure everything is blended. Okay guys, you guys ready? Here's the sauce that I made. Let's give it a good shake real quick. Let the air out. There we go. Make sure it's all mixed up. Now I'm only, as you can see, I only have a few pieces on the, I have two breasts. They're just not, uh, I'm not willing to put all my chicken on this. So I'm gonna brush this sauce that I made onto my chicken. Make sure it's all mixed because that sugar wants to clump together. Don't care if it drips all over the place. Not too worried about that. There we go. Now you know if this works. This is gonna be amazing. You can play with different things. You don't have to use oil. You can use lard if you want, like Hattie B's does. You can use coconut oil. You can do whatever you want. So it's nice and saturated right now. So what I'm gonna do is gonna warm this in and let it cook into the chicken. So I'm gonna, I got my oven on. I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 10 minutes just to heat it up. Uh, you're gonna do like a heating up chicken process. That'll get the spiciness into the batter, into the chicken and everything. And we should be good to go. So let's give that a try. Okay, so the, the scary thing is, this smells like Nashville hot chicken. I can smell the spices, but I'm, I'm not about ready to dive into it yet. All right, I'm not looking forward to this because I think I added too much cayenne pepper to that mix that I showed you guys. Um, but uh, we're just gonna give this a try anyway. So, you know, let my family know I love them and all that, okay? All right, let's give this a try. Let's break off a piece. Okay. <laughs> this really works, guys. That's hot chicken. That's spiced up already. I just brushed on the sauce. All I did was buy chicken over at Publix and brushed on sauce. That truly is the lazy man's version. So if you don't want to wait hours for the restaurant to deliver it, you want to make your own, it's white bread, this brush sauce on and pickles, sliced pickles, okay? That's how you make official Nashville hot chicken. This is the lazy man's version. Recipes down below because this is good. There you go, all right? You guys try it out, let me know. Take care, bye-bye.